Today we're here at Cranfield University's own wastewater treatment works. It's a site that treats roughly four and a half thousand uh, people's uh, wastewater, so mainly from uh, campus. And uh, on site we also have the, the National Research Facility uh, in water and wastewater treatment. And this facility was finished um, last year. Um, and this is really a, a, a world-class facility for um, doing research into um, uh, various forms of uh, water treatment, supply, um, reuse um, and yeah, conveyance. This upgrade actually extended some of our existing facilities. So for the last 15 years or so, we've had our wastewater pilot plant hall here and that has enabled us to do um, experiments at scale using real wastewater um, which gives us that, that edge to, um, to really uh, drill down to some of the nuances of, of what we're trying to do uh, when it comes to, to treatment, wastewater treatment. Uh, as part of that we also doubled the size of our testing facility so uh, we have our um, drinking water uh, pilot plant as well so um, that's a new facility which um, can treat water of a variety of different uh, sub potable quality um, all the way through to uh, water which would be suitable for human uh, consumption. Uh, as part of that upgrade we also have um, our twin pilot plant uh, and that really is a unique asset because we have the ability to undertake full drinking water treatment, test and control, so parallel treatment trains. Uh, we have the opportunity to swap out different unit operations and really understand the impact that that has had on our overall treatment uh, performance. Cranfield is blessed to have its own sewage works and we really are one of the only universities uh, in the UK and probably in Europe which has that facility. So that access to full-scale unit operations to do experiments on but also to take water from different points within that sewage works. Uh, we have three courses that will, will benefit from, from these facilities. Throughout the programme they'll have exposure to practicals which will go on mainly in the, the drinking water side of the test facility. Uh, but also the wastewater side as well and then uh, they'll have a site visit. Subsequently throughout the course they'll then do uh, the odd practical and then through um, into the thesis project where a number of the students will actually be placed um, to uh, different experiments going on in this facility and they'll undertake their thesis project um, here. So it's a really again a really nice opportunity to gain that practical uh, experience at scale. So um, the facility is um, owned by the university uh, but managed on behalf of the university by a company called Alpheus. So Alpheus are um, a, a component of the Anglian Water Group. Um, so we have an in intricate link uh, there to um, the site and uh, a, a water company. Uh, however, almost all of the projects that are based in uh, the National Research Facility, National uh, Research Facility in Water and Wastewater Treatment, are um, one way or another funded by um, by companies. So these companies could be water companies, they could be uh, members of the technology supply chain, um, they could be uh, commercial partners looking to test a product for example in a water treatment process. So um, yeah really there is that close relationship, working relationship with industry. The experiments that we're doing encompass a wide variety of different activities. So we do you know cutting edge research on algae and we're doing work on next generation reactors for nutrient removal. We work at a variety of different scales. They can be you know, small uh, bucket scale reactors um, all the way up to um, pilot plants which are treating a significant volume of wastewater. Um, we've also got uh, behind me um, some reactors which are running at what we call near real scale. So those systems are actually treating wastewater um, on our full scale facility. Um, these are student and staff run projects. Um, these projects are actually contributing to um, the wastewater treatment works ability to meet its effluent consent to the environment agency. So, you know, talking about impact, uh, you can't get greater impact than that. The students are actually directly involved in treating the wastewater which is being discharged to the environment. So, the sewage comes into Mitchell Road pumping station from the campus. It gets then pumped up by a, a 10 inch pipe coming up here into our inlet screen. The inlet screen then screens the waste from the rags. The rags will come out there into a bin, which then gets taken off site by a hazardous waste company. Um, the water, once it's been screened, goes into a balance tank where it settles the sewage. 
So we're settling out the sludge from the water. Once it goes through the balance tank, the, the water side of things goes into a, um, a lamella, which again takes solids from that water. So we're always trying to re re reduce the solids going through the works. Um, the balance tank's sludge, solids at the bottom, get taken away into a, into a sludge tank, which is then pumped out weekly uh, and taken to Milton Keynes Cotton Valley Sewage Works. So basically, most of the work we do here on, on site is actually working with the, with the waste and getting rid of the solids. When the majority of the solids are removed from the wastewater, the next step is to try to remove some of that carbon, and it's in the form of what we call biochemical oxygen demand. This is all the constituents in the wastewater which contribute to um, oxygen removal in the environment. So what we try and do with the first trickling filter is remove the vast majority of that, what we call readily biodegradable oxygen demand. Okay? So once that's removed from the wastewater, we can then um, start tackling some of the harder to remove pollutants like the ammonia um, nitrogen that's in the wastewater. And so we have dedicated trickling filters to do that activity. So as Nigel said, we're, move, we're moving as we go through the works towards cleaner wastewater. So after we've removed most of the ammonia through a process called uh, nitrification, um, the water still con contains a fair amount of uh, what we call total suspended solids. These are um, components of the wastewater which we've not been able to remove um, with the upstream processes and also some of the, the bacterial sludge that's produced by some of our processes um, as well. So we have a, what we call a final clarifier, a system which is designed to, to really polish that effluent to a, a standard where we can then um, yeah, consider releasing that in a controlled way to the environment um, and hopefully we've met the standards um, that are required to us by, by the Environment Agency and, and DEFRA. Part of the reason we have to be so careful with our effluent here at Cranfield is that we're discharging into a relatively small tributary, so it's called Chichley Brook. That then flows into um, the, the River Great Ooze, uh, which flows eventually through Bedford. Um, it's a nitrate sensitive zone, um, and so we really have to be very careful about um, the quality of the effluent that we're, we're, we're discharging. So at the moment we're in the National Research Facility, we're in the dirty wastewater side of things. In here at the moment we can get wastewater from different stages of the works into the pilot hall. We have ring mains which go round the loop and there's ten bays in here and every bay has a, has a tap off for each of those wastes water. Um, we've also got uh, compressed air to each bay. We have mains water which is a boosted water rather than on mains because we have to have a, 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 a reservoir in between to stop contamination. Uh, we also have mains electric with three phase and single phase electric. So depending on what size pumps and rigs we have in here, they, we've got everything we need. When we have a student who has to come into the National Research Facility, we have to go through a process of induction. We have a green card uh, access a student every day has to go and pick up a key for here for access and they hand their green card in at security. At the end of the day they make sure they have to give that key back and the green card is given back to them. Now what happens is with security is that if there's a green card there at the end of the day, security will come down to the facility and make sure the people are okay. Having uh, our own sewage works here and the national research facilities in wastewater and water treatment uh, is a real asset uh, for us but also for the students and their experience uh, in terms of joining some of our projects uh, where we look at uh, the, the next generation of uh, water and wastewater treatment facilities and, and technologies. Uh, so we have examples of systems here uh, where we look at uh, uh, aspects such as uh, resource recovery and water recycling, so really trying to link uh, treatment technologies into the circular economy concept uh, for example, uh, which is a very hot topic at the moment and quite high on the agenda uh, of uh, the utilities and, and governments. Uh, so again, uh, this will be an opportunity for the students uh, to uh, be part of the project, uh, do some experiments here in our, in our facilities as well as in our labs.
having these facilities here uh, is a real, a real opportunity to do applied research with a, with a real impact in the industry. A lot of the projects we have here are sponsored uh, by the industry with, with direct funding from, from the water utilities or technology providers so that we, re we really see a tra direct translation of the research work we do uh, into the uh, implementation uh, of the technology and optimization of some of those technologies. So we have a few um, let's say small scale systems here in, uh, inside the, the facility, but we also have larger scale system to full scale system outside on the sewage works itself. Uh, through a lot of our projects, uh, research projects, uh, we, are, we are working with the water utilities, the industry in general, and, and we're learning uh, about new technologies, but also optimizing existing technologies. All those learnings from the technology really help us uh, also feed back into the material that we generate in the lectures understanding how technologies uh, work and how they're implemented in real scale. And we're on the drinking water side of the National Research Facility and uh, here, as it says on the tin, we're doing uh, mainly research into um, how to create uh, drinking water standard water um, from a variety of different sources. So in the first instance, um, we can tanker uh, large volumes of water, so up to 25,000 litres um, into a, a storage tank which we have on site um, and then we can take water from that storage tank and distribute again to each of our um, experimental setups um, and again we're looking at uh, doing testing on water treatment at a variety of different scales so moving from small scale uh, column experiments or batch experiments to uh, continuous flow experiments like the one uh, the reactor that's behind me so um, this again is UCRIC investment into a, a dual train uh, drinking water pilot plant and the idea is we've got a test to control uh, so this is Professor Peter Jarvis's uh, uh, experimental system whereby we can take raw water um, from a river for example uh, and then move through each uh, treatment stage, uh, moving through things like coagulation, dissolved air flotation, um, filtration processes, um, some form of granular activated carbon process to remove pesticides or micropollutants, and then ultimately um, disinfection, so chlorination, um, which is, again, getting to, to, to the point where it's water that you may expect to see uh, in a tap. Just like on the wastewater side, we have active research projects going on in this facility and students have an opportunity to yeah, participate that through the group design projects or the, uh, the thesis project. But more generally, throughout the MSc programme, we have um, the possibility of doing practicals, experiments up here, so uh, running our near, near real scale reactors and then doing some controlled experiments to really um, reinforce the concepts that we're developing uh, through the TORC program. So those are things like um, looking at different uh, biological, chemical or physical processes that we use to treat um, drinking water or wastewater um, and yeah, understanding the fundamentals of the processes that are going on. Um, so it really is a nice opportunity to um, enable students to see that research. Um, and you know, there's plenty of space for students to actually um, undertake uh, interventions, controlled interventions in, in some of those treatment steps um, and having that test and control um, reactor system enables us to really understand the impact of that intervention. As part of our UCRIC investments, uh, both in terms of the capital investment but also through the Urban Observatory Living Lab project, we are upgrading the facility so that we can actually monitor um, the quality of the water that's coming into our facility um, in near real time. So we've got quite advanced sensor arrays which are um, uh, present and, and feeding data into a dashboard style system, so a database which students can uh, access so they can really see um, how in, in near real time uh, the quality of the water is changing um, at different stages of yes, the wastewater treatment works, but also um, throughout our, our drinking water treatment plant here as well. So that sort of um, Big data um, and data management skills are really valued by employers now as we're going towards you know, um, smart water treatment systems and more online and re remote and, um, and operator-free uh, uh, management of water treatment assets. So it's really taking, taking treatment into sort of the next, next, uh, next dimension, really. We're doing a project which is in collaboration with the UK Water Research Institute, and um, we're looking at trying to remove um, pesticides in a way where we don't uh, use um, 
additional chemicals or additional energies. As we move to ever increasing um, least stringent standards for drinking water, so water quality is having to get better and better, we're having to use more and more energy to achieve that. But again, um, that research is feeding back into our understanding of these core processes, um, which again is being utilised on the TORC programme. So, you know, students are getting this really cutting edge uh, research feeding back into their, their, their TORC, TORC component. Part of the core remit of this facility is to yeah, really turbocharge the, the research into uh, reuse. So this is reusing water. All of these concepts around using wastewater as a resource, so rather than it being uh, a wastewater treatment plant, it becomes a, a wastewater recycling plant. And the idea is, is that we can then use that water for a variety of different applications. And this facility gives us that, that flexibility. So we've got um, a source of, of treated uh, wastewater, tertiary treated wastewater, which comes from the other side of the facility into this, this side, which we can then um, undertake a variety of different experiments on. So uh, we've got uh, small scale reactors here, which are really useful for removing um, trace contaminants from that wastewater. So for example, uh, endocrine disruptors. Undertaking that, that fundamental research is really the core um, uh, of what we're doing, doing here at Cranfield around uh, water reuse and, and supply. And hopefully, it will provide um, a, more, a stronger foundation to um, start seeing water as, a, as something that should be valued and not just um, wasted.